Welcome to episode 14 of the Movie Lighthouse, shining a light through the fog of film. My name's James. I'm Laurie. And I'm William. Morning, guys. Morning. Morning. Yeah, well, this is a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. Is it weird? Well, it's, it's before midday. Oh, Therefore, right. presumably, it would be somewhat suspicious to accompany this with beer. Or... Yeah, this is the first time that Laurie's not been Super drinking dry. during this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I've been bitten by it, though, so it's definitely still in my system. How are you feeling today, then? Oh, grey. I'm great. You've done quite a lot. Do you know why I'm today, so great? Go on. What what episode is this? Is this our? It's our episode fourteen, our Halloween special. Yeah! <laughs> so we're going to have some sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it makes me very happy. Yeah, it's a Halloween special, man. I've got loads to talk about on this one. So you guys got to look after me because I I I make notes I prepare I miss all of my points I talk shit you like Halloween then I love Halloween yeah so important why is it so important because it's the only day of the year where as a species we decide to celebrate our fears embrace our fears rather than you know the rest of the year we're constantly doing everything we possibly can to run away from them or forget them and that day we grab them we hold them and I thought about this a little bit more as well it's kind of the day where the outcasts, the weirdos, the freaks, it's all, you know, we celebrate them, everyone's all accepted. And it's, it's great. So I've got a question for you. What movie yeah. do you think ah. was responsible for changing the way the British culture view Halloween? Because we're, we're, we're historically not a Halloween Yeah, celebrity. we were more bonfire night. I yeah. mean, nobody used to go trick-or-treating yeah, in true. the 70s and stuff. We had the, It was a pagan festival, wasn't it? And I yeah. think the origins of it was just remembering the dead. or the, oh, But there was a film that was responsible for, for, uh, for really I pushing reckon, the trick-or-treating. So I think it was uh, E.T. What? Bingo. Oh, it was E.T. Because yeah, you've got that great, obviously the great bit where they all go out and he's dressed up. And he tries to fix the guy with a knife through his head. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And he sees Yoda and he's like, oh, or whatever, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. He's following Yoda. See, it's part of the universe. Same universe. We said this last time. You, you shouted him down for that. <laughs> You're saying that, oh, right. <laughs> uh, but Halloween, yeah, what a beautiful, beautiful thing. And then I've been treating myself to a bit, a, a bit of a boost on the, the, the heating, home heating, the occasional <laughs> boost. I'm getting all cosy. It's really. definitely turning, isn't it? The, yeah. The kind of... Well, I could say that, year. but it was so hot yesterday anyway. We're not doing a weather report. Yeah. All right, uh, I don't think we've got any mail this week. Surely That's... not. Yeah. We did so well last time. Mm, yeah. I can't believe people didn't pick up on all of the errors in the last episode. What well, errors, errors. What errors were there? Well, I made up the 13 thing completely. It's nothing to do with Baker's Dozen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't It was the that Crusades! Well. I was thinking how what a useful piece of information that <laughs> was the other day. Oh, bloody hell. Nothing to do with that. Ooh, ooh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking out the window. I actually noticed if you look out the lighthouse window, look, there's like a fog coming in into shore look it's fog. a bit ominous ah. and it looks like there's like there could be some ghost pirates seeking treasure and revenge in there somewhere I've got, I've got, like the fog from the 1970s <laughs> maybe maybe we should so. put KAB radio on and oh, see what they've got that's to that's a report. good movie yeah hi mateys this is KAB Antonio Bay Stevie Wayne here beaming a signal across the sea for the men of the seagrass 15 miles out tonight, a warm hello, and keep a watch out for that fog bank heading in from the east. Now, in the meantime, relax with me while I play this song from the Coupe de Ville's, dedicated just to you. Right, okay, so news. He's got some news to kick us mm. off. I've got some news. Go on then. Cool. Um, do you remember a number of episodes ago, you brought up um, Alison Mack of Smallville I fame? I do. And she went, she's gone she's nuts. Joined, she joined a cult That's and, it. and was quite high up in it. There yeah. is a podcast, my sister introduced um, my wife and I to it, called Uncovered, yeah. Escaping the Nexium, and it's N-X-I-V-M, <clears throat> that talks all about it. Um, oh, wow. And it is nothing, it's crazy, <laughs> absolutely crazy. She, she came up with, um, so it's this kind of, Run, but I can't remember the name of the guy who is ultimately responsible for it. Lex Luthor. Yes. Um, and 
but she was kind of like a really senior person within the organisation. She was responsible for recruiting. Yeah. She also devised the brand that they forced some of uh, a, a small select group of women within the, the larger organisation mm. to wear and, and just be branded as part of this ridiculousness. It's, it, I haven't it's kind of like human it, trafficking, it's, isn't it? It's, it's, well, it's, that, that's all the kind of headline sensational stuff, but it's, right. it's kind of like a multi-layered thing. The Nexium is a multi-layered thing, but ultimately it appears this guy and Alison Mack and a number of other people are proper crazy. But it's, mm. it's really interesting and really... You sit there listening to it kind of go, you can see why um, some people can get, get drawn into these kind of cult things. Because yeah. there's, an, there's an element of truth and reasonableness right. in the initial grab for people. Yeah. You, they pose a question that, that no right-minded person would say, no, that's bullshit. Yeah. And then they get you in, and then it's the really susceptible people they can take to another. It's, it's really interesting. It's That's all, all religion, though, isn't it? Really, you, it, you come <laughs> up, yeah, you start with like a truth that resonates with someone. It's like, oh yeah, absolutely. And it's like, oh, this is the right thing. And then it just like grows Jesus was a carpenter, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably was a very good uh, duck duck connections. I can't remember what they're called. Duck connections. I think it's a thing. Carpentry term. Um, <laughs> But yeah, you start off with this lovely idea that, you know, inspires whatever, and then it grows and forms and perverts, and it's all, that's how cult works, isn't yeah. it, really? Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll definitely tune into that. Thank you, Wyndham. No problem. Thanks, Wyndham. I've got super quick news. Uh, so it was actually a couple of, it was even a month ago, I think, it was uh, reported that It Chapter 2 is coming out in yep. September. I watched It, the first chapter again the other day. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. It's as very it? good film, isn't it? In it, yeah, it's really good. Um, Although I was thinking, um, because it's very, hard, I find it very hard to watch new it without thinking a lot about the '90s version, the TV. Yeah, yeah. and there's so many elements of the '90s version which didn't work, but there's a lot which I think I prefer to the modern version, such as just a couple. Well, I think maybe the time spent with. You know, like Beverly and her dad. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Beverly Marsh, Beverly Marsh. Well, that's and the thing. The TV series, well, TV two episode, whatever it was, just had more time, didn't it? Yeah. Really? So obviously they're going to be able to... Well, I don't more. think it did. did it's because it's, it's three hours in length. And, you know, when you put the two films together, it's um, going to be about the same. And then the film, the recent film is, what, nearly three hours long? No, it's not. It's two hours yeah. yeah, so no, the, he's the TV's that, got the, more time to spend. No, it's not. It's got no, he's saying that the two, the two films, chapter one and chapter two, yeah. tell the story of the original TV oh, two Oh, yes! <laughs> I forgot that point! Yeah. Oh. Do you know who directed the TV uh, no, I hit? Don't. The exactly same director as one of the films that we're going to review in our Halloween special. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got some news. Go for it. Um, so, um, the new series of Doctor Who started on Sunday? Yep. It did. And did you guys watch it? I did. I watched most of it. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't see the end of it. Oh, no, I did sort of the very end of it. Okay. What did you think? I thought it was good. I haven't watched Doctor Who since uh, Tom Baker. Really. Seriously? Wow. I've seen bits and pieces of it. Right. He left in 1981. Oh, no, maybe I have seen <laughs> <laughs> Who's the guy who turned up um, the other Baker? Colin Baker. Colin Baker. 84 to 86. So that was the last one I saw more of. But I thought she was great. Yeah, Quite she like is it. great. She, she does a really good job. I think she plays that kooky bit just right. It's wonderful, obviously, seeing a woman there playing this part. And I think she's done awesome. I like her outfit. It reminds me a little bit of something out of Rainbow. So I like that. That's cool. Oh, the Sonic died. Screwdriver was great. I thought that was good fun. Yeah. Sheffield Steel and all that. I thought they were all a bit nervous. You think? I think they'll bed in a little bit more. Uh, and yeah, I found it. I wasn't very keen on the story, to be it's honest. It's a basic story. It's a Star Trek story. I think yeah. you mentioned that, Wyndham. Yeah. Um, and also, the the concept of him putting teeth into his face. Yeah. It really bothered me, and I'll tell you why in my in the beam in a bit. Ooh, it okay. Links. It's in links today. Um, yeah. So I just didn't think a great deal happened. Mm -hmm. But what I did think it did was. Um, reinvent itself and anybody could just tune in and watch it and you wouldn't have to think very hard yeah. and yeah. Um, 
you know, you could just enjoy it for what it is. But this is something about Doctor Who which actually is a disservice, but also a great attribute about it as well, because it's got such a legend. It's not a cult show. That was the whole point of the, about it. It's, it's supposed to be accessible to anybody who just wants yeah. to drunk, nip it. And but that's what's been really cool about it. I mean, like, you know, sometimes you watch Doctor Who and you're confounded and confused, but obviously all the fan people would be like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And that's a great thing about it. But also, it's, it, it needs that balance to have that, but then also be its own kind of episode, easily accessible. But am I right in thinking this now, because Moffat's gone, is that right? Yeah. Right, right? That they're going to make it much more... So Chris kind of Trindle single episode, is... Yeah, single well, it's going to make it more accessible, and there's no new, uh, no old monsters this series, and all that kind of stuff. Right, right. No so, old monsters. Yes. So, so kind of sort of forgetting the legend, and just kind of sort of yeah. reinventing itself. Because the problem is, once you build on the legend, yeah. you know... Um, and Moffat did that very well, but he had bits where everybody knew who the Doctor was in the entire universe, and like he was setting up cults to destroy the Doctor and all this kind of stuff. You get that big, then where do you go from there? Yeah, where yeah, it's yeah. just somebody turning up who solves a problem, really. For me, the biggest, biggest thing about this, why I'm so happy it's there, is because it's on a Sunday now. Yeah. And I was sat there, and then my two kids were either side of me, my wife was there, even the cat was there. And we're all under a under a blanket cosy on the sofa watching Doctor Who and I was just looking at it I was, this is wonderful well that's what it should be this about this is wonderful yeah. Yeah. yeah the family all together watching that TV ah oh. because like nowadays you know a kid's over there with a tablet the other kid's over there with a tablet with other kinds of medication <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and the other thing is it's kind of people have said what did you think what did you think and um, it's not really important what I think um the, Don't be the like kids. That. No, it's true. It's the kids, man. But the kids. Oh, the kids. Um, so my Roman's friend, into it. My Roman's friend Jane, eight. her kids really liked it. Yeah. You know, so that's the whole point, you know. Yeah. Um, so brilliant. Yeah, it's great to see that back. Okay, anyone get something else? I, I do. One, yeah. one other piece I read today, <clears throat> and I'm just going to refer to my notes here because otherwise I will forget, particularly for you, James, actually. I think you're quite like this. Matthew Holness. Does that name ring a bell? Bob Holness is son. It, it is. That's <laughs> it. Uh, sorry, <laughs> it looks like that guy died. Matthew Holness did um, Garth Marenghi, Dark Place. Right, yes. He, he wrote and performed in that. He's awesome. He kind of disappeared after That's Garth right. Marenghi. He did six episodes. He, he, he played the lead six, character. Yeah, he wrote that, it yeah. and, and played the lead. Yeah. Um, and he kind of disappeared. He did a few little bit parts. He is a, a Cambridge Footlight contemporary. Oh, is he? Of uh, David Mitchell. Robert Webb, yeah. Richard Iwadi, and John Oliver. Yeah, this all makes perfect what sense. What a group of what a group of people. Anyway, um, he is releasing his first horror movie, Possum. Oh, Possum, twenty sixth of October, and it is for me. It's it's the kind of horror movie that I will f probably find genuinely terrifying for its entirety. You know, oh, I've really said previously that when the the badness manifests, it loses me. Yeah, this is based on. Jimmy Savile. <laughs> oh, right. and then yes! All of our British listeners will know who that is. For, for our non-British listeners who might not know that, Jimmy Savile was a massive children's entertainer TV figure in the 80s, 70s and 80s, um, who, after his death, it came out that he was this horrendous mm. predator, mm -hmm. sexual abuser, um, and it kicked off a whole raft of 70s, 80s... Um, light entertainment figures being arrested and round up, rounded up and stuff like that. So it's a real dark um, psychological horror movie Ooh. based in reality. And I read a, a little quote from, from um, Matthew Holness basically saying he thinks that horror should reflect... If you, we were talking about on the last episode The Exorcist and does it still have the power it yes. had when it came out, but because we're a more secular yes. kind of society, no, it doesn't. He's, his comment is that horror should reflect modern society and picking that as a, as a start point is based on a short story. I think it's going to be horrible. Matthew! Wow. Somebody was awesome. telling me a story about Saddle the other day and um, they said in the, um, somebody had won tickets or something to go on top of the pops and uh, Jimmy Saffle was uh, presenting it and they said to this person, whatever you do, you must never, ever be on your own in a room with this man oh with, and it's like so well, everybody yeah. knew about it yeah even Johnny Rotten um, 
was saying in an interview, and it was it was banned. The BBC were like they had to take it away and lock this interview in a dark, dark, dark cupboard because he was basically saying, "You think we're all you know horrible and all that because we're punks, but actually, yeah. <laughs> I know someone who's absolutely abhorrent, a, a walking devil on this earth." He was talking about Jimmy Savile, but the BBC just cut it out and, like I say, hid that interview away. Yeah, nuts. But there we are. Wow. All right, um, I've got some more. Um, so uh, um, there's, there was a kind of internet, little internet pheno- phenomenon, puppet show called um, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Right. Which had six, like, five to ten minute episodes. It's getting its own series, and it's very surreal, very odd. I, I, you've seen an episode, Laurie, I know. I have, and I, <laughs> I think we were slightly intoxicated at the time, and it's like a weird Lynchian yes, puppet it's, it's, dream. yes. It's very yeah. odd. So what's it called again? Don't hug me, I'm scared. Okay. Uh, but you should check out an episode. It's okay. very, it's very odd. Uh, who, like, who's it there's, that, there's this like raven puppet and he's like, well, let's have the chicken dinner. Shall we eat the chicken? And it's just like raw chicken. And it just, you know, with a few flies buzzing out. It's just weird. Okay. Um, anyway, I don't know it's probably, but... Um, that's if you like weird. weirdness, check it out. All right. yeah. Don't hug me, I'm scared. Anyone got the thoughts? Uh, no. Pet Cemetery, that's coming out in a minute. I think there's a trailer. Could be good. Right. Could be shit. Another remake. Okay, I'm going to see uh, the League of Gentlemen, uh, their final show. Oh, you saw the show? Yes, cool. the O2. That uh, how was it? it? Very good. Um, and uh, said a fair... <laughs> Why is that? Very good. <laughs> very good. It's very good. <laughs> very good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the first half, they do it in... Um, how, how they did it when they started off, really. Just um, dinner suits and the odd prop and they do uh, lots of scenes from over the series um, four four series I think the Christmas special Mm. and then the second half was all full costume and they it continued the story um, after the Christmas episode so I don't know if you saw the ones at Christmas so so Tubbs ended up in a wife mind didn't she so that it opened the second act with um, Tubbs and Edward singing like a, a, a West End musical number about trying to find each other and uh, all that kind of <laughs> stuff, which is very good. Yeah. And uh, Pauline came back from Ooh. beyond the grave, you know, she, right. she faked her own death, all this kind of oh, stuff. Okay. So it was, it was very nice. It was cool. Good. Very good. What I find great about those guys is just the simple tool of sellotape. What they can do with sellotapes, you know, like the grotesque faces yes. and all that stuff. It's just a bit of sellotape that's pushing the nose this way, that way, and the other. So that's inspired me for when I go out on Halloween night. I'll, I'll put some sellotape I on. Thought we were going to sound effect. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I couldn't choose what sound effect I was going to do. Maybe I'll go as a wolf. Uh, I've, uh, yeah, I'm... <laughs> very good. Sorry. And I'm, yeah, I've been watching loads of um, Inside Number Nine as well recently, and I just think they're so clever, those guys. Because uh, really they are. write it and perform it and... The theme tune? <laughs> 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 oh, right, okay, It's good. not really much of a theme tune. Oh. Uh, but, yeah, right. So that's news. Yeah. yeah! Okay, so let's move on. Oh, I love that. I can't get enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so... Just to remind people, because um, just in case people don't know what we're talking about, um, we all choose something that we've watched over the past month that we highly recommend, and it's going to get caught in the beam of our movie Lighthouse. That's right, yeah. And I actually, I've been casting this light quite far um, for this episode, and I found something amazing. So you need to help me out, because I, I really need to do this justice, but I spotted in that beam, quite late actually, probably about three in the morning, um, too much. Beyond the Black <laughs> Rainbow. Ah! Oh right. my God! Panos Kazmatos is. Beyond... Panos Kazmatos. Panos Kazmatos. Um, I don't know. If, do you reckon that's his real name? It's too good. I think it's great. It can't be real. <laughs> uh, I knew a guy called Sausage. He changed his name to Sausage. Oh, that's stupid idiot. Anyway, <laughs> uh, came out in 2010. Yeah. Uh, I found it really hard to, as I say, I was searching everywhere with a beam. But really quite hard to find um, yeah Wyndham was a bit cheeky about this as well Wyndham you said you'd found it on Amazon and made yeah. me doubt my whole Amazon <laughs> uh, subscription I was trying to work out why I couldn't find it there, right. are, there are times in my life when I'm just very bored so we've all been searching we've been searching for the black rainbow or I found it and I watched it and how did holy you watch it holy shit with my face again um, 
holy shit, it's really, really, really good. I mean... Uh, so just to, this is the same guy who has done Mandy. Well, he's, he's got, got Mandy, Cage, yeah. Just, just which is in the news right. and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which actually is a film that you guys are going to go and see, right? Yeah, we're going to go and then we might do a little recording. Definitely, we'll review Mandy well, no, we're for the next episode. we're going to do it episode. ourselves at the cinema. Well, uh, are you coming? No, if you're not coming, oh. are you, Laurie? Well, well, why not? I'll, I'll stay up late and I'll see if I can find it and, and, and spot it. But back to the Black Rainbow. So, yeah. Um, reviews of it have said it's probably style over substance, pretentious, I you know... It doesn't really have any meaning. Gosh, I get All that about me. <laughs> I was going to say, is that about this film or about this podcast? <laughs> uh, they are com- profoundly wrong. This film uh, has massive meaning. Um, and it's just, it, it's so immersive. Basically, I'll give you the quick premise of it. It's, it's set in 1983. Uh, which is the thing that Panos seems to be kind of obsessed with, because I think he does the same thing with Mandy, set in 1983, because obviously that time, I suppose that's those, those are the last days before, you know, kind of that... that... Gremlins. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, obviously the internet, the mobile phone, all that, when just things changed, there was kind of like the great beyond, as it were. Kids could go out at night into a real adventure because you wouldn't know where they were, whatever. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. Set in 1983, the premise is uh, a very familiar premise. You've got a girl that's kind of held in this institute um, and she's got like sort of telekinetic capabilities uh, and this tyrant is really sort of observing her and sort of torturing her, really. But the origins of that institute that she's kind of locked in originally started off in 1966 there was this initiative called uh the aboria aboria do we need to know the whole thing or can you just give it was back, it basically like a, 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 what happens in, in it? the 60s everyone wanted like pure happiness didn't they Right. They're all after that beautiful peace, you know. Except for Manson, he didn't want pure happiness, did he? Well, exactly. Yeah. So this, this, was pretty hard yeah. well. They started off to try and seek pure happiness, okay, in 1966. All these p- professors and all that sort of stuff. But as it grew, it perverted like cultism. So now you flash to 1983, and basically this cult has turned into this really oppressive facility where you've got this beautiful little girl, and yeah, they're just basically torturing her. And she can't she's her powers are oppressed by this kind of like triangle pyramid thing that they turn up and she can't use her her powers because it's just suffocating her swallowing her um and oh for god's sake i knew i wouldn't be able to do this so you can't even talk yourself for that the soundtrack of it the (laughs) the visuals of it it just eats you up it's part of the narrative it's part of the story itself, the sound of it, it's just, it just, it's an experience and the, the best film I've seen by far in a very, 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 very long time. Beyond the Black Rainbow, it's freaking, okay. freaking awesome. Check it out. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Wyndham. So I watched um, The Devil's Rejects. Uh-huh. Have you seen it? I think I have. It's a Rob Rhyming. Zombie film uh, and it's basically about a serial killing family mm. uh, oh, yeah, at the it. end of their run when the police finally... Is there a clown in it? There is a clown. Yeah. Who's yeah. yeah. Rob Zombie? Played, no, it's not, Sid Haig. Oh, is it? Oh. Um, but it's just oh. horrible. It's like a proper scary movie for me because it's that... It's not, it doesn't put the horror down to the supernatural. It's the, the, the deep, unseated horrificness of some people. I mm. quite like Rob, Rob Zombie. Is that his name? Mm. Yeah, I quite like his films. I mean, some of them are a bit hit and miss, but he's really got a style and a product. Yeah. He's a bit grubby, and it's a bit... It, it is it's grubby. Icky. It's dirty, and it's... Yeah. Kind of, yeah. It, you kind of yes. feel unpleasant watching it. Yeah. And yeah. it's just... It doesn't shy away from... You know, it doesn't lead you to the point where you go, okay, now you cut to something else and I have to imagine it. It goes, no, no. Yeah, yeah, we get a shame exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's really unpleasant. But for what it is, I think it's really good. Great. All right. Well, I got a, C- a TV series uh, that I want to talk about, um, and it's called Channel Zero, and it's like an anthology series. And my God, it's amazing. So every year they're doing a different story, basically. Um, and I think they've only made two seasons so far, um, but I can only get older one. So season one is called Candle Cove. 
Right. It's only six episodes, so it's mm. the right amount of time. And it's got echoes of Twin Peaks and things like that. But it gives you all the answers. So every answer that you seek is there. And it's basically about this child psychologist who's about 40. Uh, he's got lots of echoes of it as well. Who um, goes back to his hometown where there are a number of murders of his schoolmates and his twin brother um, when they were about 11. And so there's lots of flashbacks. Um, and they were all watching this really weird TV show mm. at the time um, called Candle Cove. And it's, again, puppets. And... It's just really freaky. It's like you get, um, it's like a, a pirate ship, and all the puppets are just weird looking, and they all look terrified all the time. Right, and uh, you know it's like there's bravery cave. You've got to go inside. Oh no, laughing stock. That's one whale of a storm. We better run and hide. It'll be your hide if you turn tail, Percy. Be brave! Brave the waves! Oh, look! It's Bravery Cave! You have to go inside! And then, um, it's, it's amazing. Uh, Is it serious? Is it actually genuinely yeah, supposed to be yeah, unnerving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's very unnerving. And cool. one of, one of um, the main kind of things in it, this is why it annoyed me about Doctor Who, is um, there's a creature that is just made out of teeth. And it's just uh, covered in it's just teeth, basically. Uh, oh, so did, did you put that... Was that that image yes, we had on the Moving Lighthouse ad Absolutely. Ah, but all these was. weird things that are going on throughout the series, um, they explain all of them. It all makes sense, so it's very simple. Which is a beautiful thing, because yeah. we definitely had a good really few years it. where people just make you can watch. <laughs> you can watch the first episode on Amazon Prime for 10 pence. Uh, and the name of this thing again? It's called Channel Zero uh, Candle Cove. Dun, dun, plum, 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 plum. <laughs> Great. All right, so um, let's do On The Rocks. Oh. Love On The Rocks. Ain't no surprise. All right, Neil. Right, with them. So, so very quick one. Um, we've spoken about the purpose of the movie Lighthouse is to shine a light through the fog of film. That's correct. With the uh, increase in budgets for people like Netflix and Amazon, and now Apple are getting involved. Are they going to stop paying us? No. Uh, but <clears> they're <throat> making a lot of original product, mm -hmm. and a lot of it is really shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And this is a film called Canaries, and right. it's uh, a Sky TV original, a Sky movie original, okay. and it's rubbish. It's The premise is... Um, an Amer uh, an hold on, hold on, can we guess? So I'm <laughs> going to guess that the premise is it's set in the 19th century and a load of people are going down into a mine and there's gas explosions everywhere they need clearance to survive. Laurie? Um, Looking at my iPad, <laughs> showing what it's about. <laughs> I see just like a really sweet guy and maybe like some some knitted jumper looking after a beautiful little canary and feeding it worm. Yeah, it's got nothing to do with canaries. It's about uh, a, a local London radio DJ. So imagine XFM DJ. Yes. All that kind of, hey man, crazy sound effect. Uh -huh. All that rubbish. Well, Laurie, going home, a little bit like Laurie. Uh, going home to this little village in Wales because his London career has come to a juddering halt. Yes. And while they're there, bodies start falling from the sky um, and they then start killing people. What the bodies do? The cool. bodies kind of get reanimated. They grow these long oh, wow. claws. No, um, don't wow. This is <laughs> rocking it. amazing. And it turns out that these are alien... Aliens have come to Earth, stolen these people and a period of time that can jump. It's a bit of time travel. They drop them to take over areas. Uh, right. And the premise is that the American government have done a deal that they won't do it in America. So <laughs> it, they, they do it in Wales. Is it? <laughs> well, okay. it's rubbish. Well, the performances aren't very good. The performances aren't very good. You, you can tell it's low budget, but that doesn't mean it has to be shit, does it? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be super quick on mine. I did bump uh, into uh, one that's... Re well. Is it worthy of rockage? Yeah, it is. Snowman, the snowman. Yes, I know. I saw the first 20, 20 minutes of this. Yeah. And I was quite excited when I saw the trailer. And, and yeah. it just didn't... I, I was hoping for something like Sounds of the Lambs. And it, well, it, it's is this a Joe Nisbo? 
adaptation. Oh, I haven't got a clue. I, we've, we've got, got uh, what's his face, Fastbender in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's there's some really great shots and you know good strong actors in it. Um, but unfortunately, the film's just a mess. I think they must have had some sort of production issues, but it kind of sets itself up to be actually mean something, but actually transpires. No, it's really basic, actually quite cheesy kind of plot and reveal at the end. There's some bizarre stuff. You've got Val Kilmer in there with a weird voiceover. I think any time Val turns up, ever since he did uh, <laughs> he's The Island of Dr. Moreau. He's, he's past his best, best, isn't he? Bless his heart, though. But yeah, and it's, it's his character, there's absolutely no point to it. It's just, a, unfortunately, it's just a big mess of a film. So the snowman probably don't bother. Yeah. Okay, um, and the one that I'm going to talk about is downsizing, which I saw the other day. And it's a real shame, actually, because... The first half of the film, the concept is brilliant. It's like the world is running out of resources, so you could shrink yourself to about a couple of inches and you you go and live in this place called Leisureland or something um, and you get you kind of have a mansion because a mansion's only about the size of this room. And, yeah. You know, the food lasts for ages and stuff. What about so, the spiders? Fred spider, particularly this time of year. Well, like they, they live in, in a big <laughs> dome, basically. So oh, it's right. all protected. Um, so the first half of the film is all about whether to do it because you can't reverse the process and all this kind of stuff. Of course not. And then he does it and it's great. So you're seeing this whole world. And then it just goes on a completely different tangent about saving the environment and stuff. And it's, <laughs> it's so disappointing because the first half is brilliant. And well, they so, are. And all I'm on is it's like, oh no, what's going to happen is they're going to have to go out into the big world and try and do something yeah. and none of that. You didn't even see anything big. You're better off watching <laughs> the borrowers. They are. <laughs> Good old borrowers. I like the borrowers. All right. All right. Okay, so let's move on to... Wow, you've got post-it notes and everything in your notepad. Honestly, there's some stuff I need to cover, review. kid. Crumbs. All right, so before we get going, last week, you... Uh, last month, you douchebags... Yeah. Between the two of you, what do we do? Chose Heroku the Goblin. Heroku! You came up with it. I came up with ridiculously. it. Ridiculously. And, and then you, I and chose you know, it. obviously chose it. Unbeknowing to me that you cannot get actually. Well, a... you can get it for 50 quid. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you can't watch it anywhere um, except the original Japanese version. Subtitled, subtitled in Chinese. Chinese. Yes. Uh, on YouTube and I was thinking the other day because I've got a Chinese friend and I was thinking shall I get him to come around and he can talk he's to not him. that close a friend though no. not really he works for me so I can pay oh, him to do it okay. <laughs> but yeah so yeah, what the hell were you thinking guys I'm well, really sorry and, and I hadn't I literally only picked it because I knew Laura would pick it <laughs> <laughs> I fucking I thinking, did I was thinking about you <laughs> I was thinking about Laurie and Hausu had just been knocked off our leaderboard oh. I, I thought we needed to revisit Pop. Japanese randomness well, we're going to try and review it the best we can. It's not going to take long, is it? It's really not going to take long. I I went into the YouTube thing and I... I All right, well, before we talk about it, let's have a clip. Oh, yeah, be. Really, you have to find a lot of people in the school. If you don't have to, you'll be able to find a lot of私の住む土地からこれまでの定説を全く覆してしまう古墳が見つかったのだ。こっちはヒルコン。この地方に伝わる伝説の化け物。危険なんだよ。ね、俺は、俺は、俺は、俺は、俺は、俺は、俺は、
Hiroko, the goblin, yeah. is uh, effectively a demon guarding a gate to hell. That gate to hell happens to be at the site that somebody thought it would be a good idea to put a school. Hold on a minute. This reminds me of something. What's that? Well, I was gonna, I'm going to put in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Ah, just there. Look at that. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah and Buffy was good, wasn't it? Oh, Buffy was great. Se- was uh, uh, season two for me. You, Wyndham, you're a massive fan of Buffy. I was right? at university, yeah, I was. Did you fancy a little bit? It did. Carmen, Elect- Carmen Electra, was it? Carmen. What, Buffy Carmen? Summers? No, no, the other one. Uh, the kind Carmen, of rich the one. who played the rich one, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, Cordelia. Cordelia. That was it. Um, anyway, back to Hiroko. Hiroko. So that's the premise that a school has been built on the gates of hell and. After that, it becomes a bit interpretive. <laughs> mm. So, I'm not quite sure what triggers Hiroko, but he comes back, or it comes back, uh, and basically there's a small group of school kids, um, one of whom is in love with a girl, and as with all these films, there's a random bloke with a suitcase who comes to help. He's the archaeologist. He's, isn't he? he's yeah. He's he's the guy who's got a um, a Hiroko detecting saucepan. Yes. Um, <laughs> and a bike. Mm-hmm. And then there's an old carpet, uh, an old janitor who has previously had a fight with Hiroko the goblin. And Hiroko comes and basically decapitates the kids, puts their heads on spider bodies, and then every time one of them dies, their face gets burnt on the back of. One of the other kids. That's it. It's random. Yeah. Wow. What is it with the Japanese and their obsession with Japanese schoolgirls? Uh, they're a very repressed nation. Oh. Is the, we, yeah. That's what, oh, that's what I was thinking about. Uh, Not Japanese schoolgirls. But... <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you don't look, look, see them on their, their, their weekend outfits very often, do you? You always, yeah, always in their was, school yeah. uniform. Which is very, <clears throat> across the board, the whole of Japan, they all look exactly the same in the school uniform. It's a bit racist, isn't it? Well, is, is that, that right? Well, they don't know. Are you saying they're all look the same? No, I'm <laughs> saying the clothes, the fashion, for goodness sake. Right, God. well, look, well I'm I, gonna, I, I didn't admit, know I, what was going on. I got through about half of it. Oh. I got through about 10% of it. Oh, well, <laughs> mate, what do you know what's going on? Yeah, for I you, it it you are awesome. I watched it all. You're awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. Shall we score it? <laughs> 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 Have you got any more points you'd like to make with it? Right, well, um, I think we should score it. It's kind of, well, yeah, it's a bit naughty, because I, I can't actually... How can you score it? You only saw 10 Exactly. Well, you can't score it. Me and Wyndham also. You can okay. only score well, it. Wyndham, I think you should score it. I think that's only fair. <clears throat> I think this sits outside of our score, doesn't it? I don't know whether the performances are any good or not. <sighs> just give it an overall. <laughs> uh, 32. I will give it... Let me just reflect on what I've given other things. Do you know what? I don't think we should, we should score no it. It's, yeah. it's one of those things. If you speak Japanese or read Chinese, give it a go. Let us know what it's about. Yeah, That'd right in. Right, actually, yeah. That'd be perfect. Okay. Uh, and moving forward, I promise not to propose films that I haven't. Well, Look, I'll, I I'll shouldn't have films I haven't it. seen, but I will endeavour to be a little bit more mainstream. Wonderful. Pleased to hear yeah. it. All right, so we're going to move on to our second choice, which was The Silence of the Lamps. Mm. So let's have a clip. You spook easily, Starling. Not yet, sir. He's past the others. The last cell. I'll be watching. You'll do fine. A killer is on the loose. Keeps them alive for three days. Then he shoots them, skins them, and dumps them. A rookie FBI agent is on his trail. He's got real physical strength, cautious, precise, and he's never impulsive. He'll never stop. But in order to track him down, she'll have to match wits. I'll help you catch him, Clary. Believe me, you don't want Hannibal Lecter inside your head. With the darkest of all minds. Just do your job and never forget what he is. But he's a monster. Pure psychopath. So rare to capture one alive. So close to the way you're gonna catch him, do you realize that? Oh, Clarice, your problem is you need to get more fun out of life. You told me you don't spook easily. You call this easy, sir? Lecter's missing hand arm. Man's a raving maniac. Who knows what he'll do? (laughs) 
Okay, so, Sounds of the Lambs. Before we do that, I've forgotten to give you some information about 1991, so I'm going to do that now. All right. Great. Okay, so in the news, it was a Gulf War. Oh, yeah. Um, also, Desert Storm. Mm. Yeah. Also, um, it was the year that crop circles came into prominence, apparently. Yeah. 600 new ones appeared. One in the Prime Minister's garden. They are. They started to visit in earnest. Well, students mm. started to get on it. Um, let's have a look. Um, that, um, Vic, and Re- Vic Reeves' Big Night Out was on TV. Oh, Vicky Reeves and Bobby Mortimer. As was Noel Edmonds' house party. Oh. Which okay. I hated. Blobby, blobby, blobby. <laughs> was that in that they had like a live, they were broadcasting live and some guy was in a box from a crane and... No, and that was his late, late breakfast show. Oh, okay. And they died. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Was that, <laughs> was that death? That's really not a very good heartbeat. <laughs> no, it's not. So around the same time, you would have the uh, Paul Daniels Halloween specials around that period, and it would always end. Oh, Paul would do a really massive <laughs> death-defying <laughs> trick. This is the worst segue ever. You've just got a list of things you want to wedge into this Halloween special. I've just thought of it. <laughs> right? But, um, yeah, so Paul would always end off the episode, the Halloween special, magic special, with a death-defying feat, and it would always end that actually you think, oh shit, well, he was dead. did he die? And yeah. it, it would just end. No music, nothing. So that also implies probably around the same time we no, had Ghostwatch. No, it wasn't Ghostwatch. Ghostwatch. It wasn't Ghostwatch in 91, so we're not talking about it. Was that 92 then? I don't know. It wasn't 91. Okay. Anyway, um, Paul Daniels, his last trick um, was, you know, he, he got brain tumour um, and he was really ill, but the where the brain tumour was lying in his brain, yeah. uh, it made him keep, um, keep forgetting he had a brain tumour. Right. So he was really brilliant spirits as though before he died. Th- thought nothing was wrong, but he died. Oh, that's so good. Goes, so that was quite nice. And then Debbie McGee mm-hmm. uh, chucked out uh, his son. So his son had a magic shop, and uh, she, she chucked him out and sold it. Oh, oh Debbie. Come on, Debbie. Uh, families are tricky. Families, families are tricky. We don't know the full wins and outs of it. Are tricky. Do you think he liked it? Not a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the charts, anyone know what the biggest selling single of the year was? Right said Fred, I'm too sexy. Nope. Right said Fred, it was, deeply right, happy. It was the summer when this song was number one forever. Brian Adams. Yes. What was it? Everything I did. Everything I did. Yeah. From which film? Robin Hood, wood. Blaze of Wood. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Prince of Wood might have been the porn version. <laughs> um, and who died? Let's have a look. Robert Maxwell? Died he fell off a boat. Did, yeah. Or did he? Did he? Uh, I've heard he's partying with Elvis. Lee Remick died? Did he? She? Did she? From The Omen? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. Is that right? Jim Rodenbury died. Okay. From Star Trek. Freddie Mercury. Oh. And Miles Davis. They are. Oh, and some other so that was 1991. And the top grossing films, uh, Dances with Wolves was number five, Three Men and a Little Lady, Silence of the Lambs, Terminator 2, and on the top was, this was a, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. This was a good year, wasn't it? Was no. 91. Well, Terminator 2. It was a good year. I think Dances it was. with Wolves. What was, I've oh, was just read these. Right. What are you doing? I've just read those things out. Do you like Terminator 2? Do you like that? I love Terminator nah. 2. Don't you like it? What's better, Terminator or Terminator 2? Terminator. But that doesn't yeah, mean right. you can't like Terminator 2. Yeah. I think Terminator and Terminator 2 are very, it's very similar to Alien and Aliens. As in they're very, very different so. genre films. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah, but it was quite a great. Yeah, it's fun. I guess when they open it up and they have fun. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to put in a little bit of Arnie and the Terminators. Yeah. Is that Arnie, Arnie and the Terminators? <laughs> Here's a message from the future. It's very hard to get. Oh. I can't remember anymore. Uh, unfortunately, I can only rap to very bad rap. Uh, that was 1991. That was 1991. <laughs> right, so, sorry. Silence of the Lambs. Mm. Okay, so... Um, it was directed by Jonathan Dem, screenplay by Ted Talley, novel by Thomas Harris. Box office, 272 million worldwide. That's pretty good. It, it won five Oscars. Mm-hmm. And um, 
It's had a lot of sequels and spin-offs. Mm. Um, Hannibal, um, Red Dragon, uh-huh. Hannibal Rising, um, Hannibal TV series, yeah. and Manhunter, which was, was, which, yeah. which was before this. Yeah. And in my opinion, actually, is, is better. That's Thingy Cox, isn't it? Uh, Brian, Brian Cox, Cox plays Cox. Hannibal. Yeah, you only see him very, very briefly. I think only just a couple of times in the, the whole film. But it's Michael Mann film came out in 83? No, I think. I, I, I think it was later than that. Was it a bit later than that? Um, it feels like a late 80s sort of. 86. Yeah. There you go. 86, right, yeah. Michael Mann, Brian Cox. But that's a really, it's really, really good. Well, we're not but, talking about that today. Yeah. So, um, notable actors. Jodie Foster is clearly Starling. Um, Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter, Scott, mm. Scott Glenn as Jack Crawford, and Ted Levine as Buffalo Bill, James Gunn. Yeah. Um, that'll do, really. Okay, so, uh, Wynn, do you want to give us a bit of a synopsis? Uh, yep. Um, so there is a serial killer, the press is called Buffalo Bill, who is abducting, murdering, and skinning his victims. He likes to skin them. Um, Jack Crawford is head of behavioural science at the FBI and he is trying to solve solve it and in so doing they're looking to interview all the serial killers they currently have in prison or asylums, one of which is Dr Hannibal Lecter, uh, Hannibal the Cannibal, and he sends Clarice Starling, a young trainee agent, to interview him with the hope that they can elicit his help in catching uh, Buffalo Bill, um, which he then agrees to. Yeah, because they kind of, they, they use her, they pick her because they think she's got those sort of qualities that will kind of interest Hannibal yeah. and get curious and kind of like his type, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right, so, um, anyone got any connections to the film? Um, I mean, this is another one for me that's steeped in the, uh, the, the public zeitgeist, you know. Oh yeah, massively. Just know it so much. French and Saunders did a very oh, funny yeah, yeah. skit of it. Yeah, where they, loads of parodies. Yeah, yeah. but they uh, they put light entertainment entertainers in the uh, in the cells. Right. So when she walks past, <laughs> the final Hannibal man. goes, "What did the cranky say to you?" <laughs> <laughs> Fat double dozy. <laughs> I find it very hard not to think about that every time. Yeah. Um, all right. Do you mean personal connection, or do you mean like yeah, my mum was a producer? Yeah, I do really. My mum wasn't the producer. No, I wasn't the producer. <laughs> so, uh, first memories, when did we first see this? When? Uh, so, I would have seen this, I don't know, shortly after it came out. I didn't see it at the yeah. cinema, but I would have seen it when it went to video. Um, and I, it, it's a brilliant film, yes. I think. It, it is really, blew me it really away. stands up. And just the, um, <clears throat> as, uh, Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter is brilliant. Just really kind of motionless. He's just control. He's got control. He's just calm. He's just his laser focus. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can see him seeing into the characters he's he's talking to. Just the way Hopkins plays him, I, I was was a, amazing. I thought, yeah, there's there's that whole kind of idea about acting for film isn't there yeah and you know just some micro movements of the face and there's a bit where he does a little wink yes and it's just yeah it's brilliant it's when he's looking at the the um yeah that's the it. questionnaire for the first yeah. time he licks his finger opens it and just winks at clarice <laughs> yeah but that's actually the really interesting thing is most of the really powerful shots are all direct to camera so they're not acting opposite the yes. character yeah, they're yeah, talking yeah. to and all through the film the majority of um, the really good dialogue and the really good interaction is straight to camera. A bit like Which, Mother. I haven't seen Mother. Yeah. Um, Mother's very, very good. Yeah. But uh, that, that kind of, to me, almost kind of lifts the performances even more. It just, th- these are brilliant, brilliant actors mm. delivering amazing performances, even in light of the fact that actually all they're getting is the black box of the, of mm. the camera rather than another actor to, to act off. It's like that, that first introduction to, well, like, you know, Clarice is... Um, just walking along the prison hallway and then it shots to him just standing there perfectly still yeah. and it just sort of seems like Anthony Hopkins all his time in the theatre all his acting and he's you know he's kind of a hammy actor really isn't he but he's it's just perfect this character this Hannibal character and his intellect his culture his 
you know, it's just his superiority, his predator, whatever. It, Hopkins just taps it perfectly. It can We've maybe... never seen anything like it before, no. I don't think. Well, it, it can't, well it's, it's because of that character. I That's what I mean. Thomas was... Harris has just given us this fucking brilliant idea, this brilliant character. But Hopkins can, it, it can argue he goes a little bit into the hammy world. Do you know what I mean? Just a little bit. You know, with a fine candy. And but no, I disagree. I think that's only because that's resonated from that film after that yeah, we go absolutely. on. You're people right. go on about it all the You're time. You're absolutely right. Actually, and when I watched this again, I was just so surprised how fucking good it is. Yeah. And yeah, back to Hopkins' performance. Actually, you no, know, you are right. He, he, he absolutely nails and, it. And all of those those little bits that you could suggest are a bit hammy. So the bit where he's kind of he's sniffing the the, the holes in his glass yeah. fronted cell. Yeah, kind of go. You wear Nivea skin cream, <laughs> and it's it's but not today. that could be hammy, but I think it's actually when you watch it, you kind of look at it and you go, actually, he's he's he is this perfectly still intimidate. He wants to use these kind of affectations to get under the skin of Clarice Starling. So yeah. that whole kind of <laughs> yeah, it's just as a kind of counterpoint to his control almost. Yeah, he's kind of, it kind of what him. is that? So is, is that him tasting the wine? I think it's the the joy of the guy's liver. Yeah, it's it's because for for most of the time you forget that he's actually a, a psychopath. Yeah, you know, and so we those little things. We root for him, don't we? We really do. He becomes the antihero. When did you first see it, Laurie? Uh, I was at school, um, secondary school. My mate Keith was reading the book at the time. There was a bit of a hubbub about this film coming out. It was obviously a massive success in America. Casey Casey used to do the American Top 40, which is a show I freaking loved and I always record it and all, yeah, brilliant. And there was loads of uh, Silence of the Lambs stuff on there. I was like, oh, this looks great. So the minute obviously came to video, slapped it straight on and loved it, loved it. I did, it didn't scare me though, uh, which was kind of odd uh, because now I watched it now, I was like, yeah, this is really quite, is scary. And that, that scariness, I think, because Tom, Tom uh, Harris, he was influenced from real serial killers. There's lots of kind of real stuff in this. And uh, the scary bit isn't Hannibal for me. It's, it's Buffalo Bill, yeah. I think is fucking awesome. <clears throat> oh, come on, it's a bit. Yeah, um, for me, uh, yeah, it's VHS as well. Um, it was one of those films that I think everybody was watching at the same time, mm, yeah. wasn't it, really? Okay, so... Um, Let's talk a little bit about the opening shots. Mm. Her pain. Her pain? Hurt. Pain. Oh, signs on the... Um, yeah, so Clarice pain. is running through... Um, the assault course at yeah. the FBI Training Academy. So what do we think about Clarice living in a man's world? She's great. I think the casting's perfect as well because she's got... You know, Jodie Foster has got that... I don't know. She's, she's got that vulnerability about her edged with... I'm not real strength. Yeah, yeah, though. absolutely. Sharp on it clever you know she's not girly girly she's yeah. really 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 good casting but there's lots of bits like there's a bit where she gets in the lift and it's just full of men yeah and they're all looking at her and uh what else she when, when, the, when they shit. pitch up to the um when the body is yes. found out of the river and it's all the kind of local <clears throat> police officers in their big hats and crawford yeah. actually says you know there are certain aspects of the case we shouldn't talk about and pointedly looks at clarice don't you they're going oh you dick yeah. So everyone's kind of playing with Clarice in this film. Yeah. To, except for Barney. He seems quite a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So what do we think of the plot? It's good. It's brilliant. It's, it is it's brilliant. It's a really good story. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And it keeps you gripped all the way through, especially that bit at the end where they, um, and I remember that vividly the first time I watched it, it's like, oh, they're about to catch him, they're about to catch him. Oh, and the oh, oh. Rings. So yeah. That's the first time I think, well, there must have been some other stuff in films before similar to that, but that's been, you know, that's been used a lot in films since, but that is such an awesome bit, was isn't brilliant. it? The doorbell bit is yeah. just so yeah. good. I don't know if there's a bit of a plot issue there, though, because I always thought about this. That uh, she she speaks to her friend, doesn't she? The person that was killed finds out that she was obsessed about seamstressing. And yeah, they and she went Lipton. They did a lot of work yeah. with her, Miss Lipton. But he moved in after Mrs. Lipton. So he killed. No, he Mrs. killed Mrs. Lipton. Lipton. She's in the bath. She's right, in the bath. that's her in the bath. That's, that's her yeah. in the bath. Yeah. Right. So, so that whole kind of. So how did he know? When when Hannibal Lecter, so he knew he knew the girl. The girl. 
So, so he, he was, was in, in and around her life, so he knew of this woman. Well, where, where was Jane Gunn living before he killed Lipton? Locally. So he was, no, no, no. Before he killed Lipton, he was living in the house at the FBI raid, 400 miles away. Right. Oh, right. But when he's driven, so Hannibal Lecter saying, what do we cover? We yes. cover that which we see every day. He's driven back to his hometown because right. he's ready to start oh, wow. murdering. Oh, well, and he takes that, that house at that point. Back to the prop, though. Why does it work? Why is it so cool? Mm -hmm. It's because you've got this device of, you know, Hannibal is basically helping Starling get into the brain of Buffalo Bill and try and figure out how, how we can find him. And Hannibal's like a cheeky, clever, playful dungeon master, basically. He knows Everything the he's saying, everything he's saying is like a riddle. Yes. So it's not straightforward. So you kind of get in these puzzles all the way through the film, it's like, oh, oh right, okay, that meant. So she gets led to the the lockup, the lockup, lock yeah. Miss, Miss Moff, and then you find the head, and then what does that I mean? I love that, that, that. Yeah. I forgot about so that. So he's playing well. with her, and all the puzzles have got that sort of. And as a viewer, you kind of can pat yourself on the back. You feel like you're learning something. It's quite educational. It's quite intellectual puzzles, you know, like and when he, when we cover what we see every day, yeah, things yeah. like that, you know. And when he says it's, uh, he gives the name as Lewis Friend, and it's iron sulfide, and that's fool's gold, and it's, oh, yeah. your anagrams are showing, Dr. Lecter. Yeah. It's yeah. And it also, throughout, again, back to, to talking about um, Chloe's a bit, it's all a struggle for her, like, she can't even get the lock-up door open on her yeah. own. It's yeah. Like you really do see how she's really trying really hard to get into the FBI, but yeah. everything's been really tough, yeah. and she just wants to succeed. And then at the end, they say, oh, we've got, we've caught, we know where he is, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he just hangs up the phone and it's like, oh, you know, so. You well, she's very happy. Like that, she's she's gonna go, yeah, yeah. And, and at that point, it's not, it, she's, she says, actually, I'll be there. It's going to take yeah. you how many hours? No, 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 we're after a serial killer here, not a tax evader or something. And she goes, okay, brilliant. Oh, re primarily really pleased that they've found him. I've got a couple of things I need to ca catch up on here. But she's, yeah, it's, it's a brilliant plot. And it's, mm. the pace of it is perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and it, yeah, it slowly just, you know, reveals whatever. So you, you, they find the first body or whatever it is, or third body, and that they go to the autopsy scene, they put that little smudge underneath them. Quite interested to know what that smudge might be. Vicks vapor up. <laughs> I reckon it is. I reckon it's menthol. Yeah. Very strong. Yeah. And they find the chrysalis in the throat. Lovely yeah. bit of breath that comes out of yeah. the throat when that happens. Yeah. Um, but that is representing, well, Buffalo Bill does it. And it's obviously that transformation for him, that, you know, that, that, because uh, he wants to be... You know that's said very clearly in the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But no, but it's <laughs> a lovely reveal. It's just the, it's like the really iconography obvious. of it. It's just, it's just great. It's got meaning. It's got content. It's, it feels good. And, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, 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 sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say, the, the, talking about the, the pace and flow of it, that kind of, for Lecter, there is no time pressure. Mm. So you have him perfectly calm, just kind of, well, I can just play this out. Yeah. You owe me. I'm the one who knows. You, I'm not just going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. There has to be a deal here. Mm -hmm. You see Clarice's kind of, she's running out of time. Mm -hmm. She's becoming more and more difficult. No, no, come on, why don't you just say, no, quid pro quo. Oh, <sighs> Clarice, quid That's pro it. quo. And so just, that their relationship, he essentially becomes her mentor, her yeah. teacher, and then kind of it falls. I think they fall in love with each other yeah, yeah, as well. There's a, a huge amount so, of mutual and, respect. And in the book, that that is played with much more than in the film. And and unfortunately, in the sequel, they really go to town with that. They yeah. actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we'll talk about all the sequels and all the bit other bits later. But let's try and keep this separate. Another bit, you know, you just feel Clarice's pain, but at the end when she arrives and meets Jane Gum. And she walks into the house, Ooh. and behind oh. her is a picture of a butterfly. Of the butterfly, the yeah. fucking hell! And then, she doesn't notice, but then she notices like there's a bomb. Well, one lands. Doesn't one land by her or something? That's it. Yeah. On, on the the the, she sees the death head on its back. Yeah, <clears throat> and that, that for me was that bit when she realizes she, he runs off. She finds uh, Catherine in the pit, and then he turns the lights out, and he's oh got my his night vision. Yeah, watching that for the first time was one of the most stressful experiences. Yes, me yeah. too. I remember, I remember that in very film. clearly. Yeah, really scary. And this is what this film does as well. It balances perfectly that sort of psychological thriller, arguably maybe romance, but it's, it is horror, isn't it? I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, actually, wait up. Should we put Science of the Lambs in here? Because I'll remit's horror, cult, sci-fi. Is this really horror? And then watching it, that, you know, Buffalo Bill's house, which is going down into the rooms and the corridors, 
oh fuck yeah, this is fucking crap. horror man yeah. this is horror you know, then it turns the lights off it's just whoa so 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 good yeah I forgot how fucking good it was yeah really brilliant good. did I um, can anyone remember back to when you first saw it and Hannibal the whole bit where he's been moved to, is it to Boston or somewhere mm. and yeah. and he escapes his escape and he's obviously taken the face off the guard and stuff. Did anyone guess that at the time? Can no. you remember that? I didn't. That he was the dead body. Yeah. Yeah. No. Because no. no, he wasn't watching it. He was no, no, he was pretending to. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Watching it, knowing yeah. it, it's so it feels so obvious. And he looks um, like Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of go. Did I was fooled by this? What? He looks yeah. exactly and like. Yeah. And that's what Anthony I was thinking. I was fooled by. It, but it, 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 at the time, a hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Um. All right, so let's have talk a little bit about. Oh, this is it. Let's talk about. Is it Catherine? Yeah. All right. So for me, there are a few bits of music in film that are just up there. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. bit when she's in the car singing along to American Girl. Yeah. All right. Yeah, like that's that. where I first heard the song. I love that song now, and I love that bit. Oh yeah, oh, you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then straight after that, she gets put in the van, yeah. which is. Horrible, yeah, and yeah, if you yeah. think about that scene where she gets in the van, <clears throat> if you're offering to help somebody in that scenario, yeah, you're not in control of which end because you're not expecting. Yeah, because right? he turns, yeah, 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 he just, yeah, yeah, he just yeah. walks, even though his end is closer yeah, to the he van. Turns I was, he steps back and put, and what do you do? You kind of go, actually, yeah, we're it's too it's polite in society. Kind of go, actually, I've seen signs of the van, so I think you're going to bash me. <laughs> <laughs> so you go in first. Yeah, it's, we just, and she wouldn't have seen signs of the van. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, it's funny you mentioned that, isn't it? Isn't it weird that stuff that stand out? But I remember that scene and it just that was, oh shit. And I could imagine myself in that situation, easily getting into that fucking situation. And then you finish, so and you'd have that moment where you're just helping him out, it's all cool. And then you'd be like in the back of the van, you'd be, oh, wait a minute. And they're looking at you and you'd feel a bit awkward. And then fuck, he's just smacking me in the head. Yeah. But yeah, it's weird that, that that stood out. Music though. That for me, uh, uh, Q Lazarus, Goodbye Horses. Yes. Uh, where you've got uh, Buffalo Bill, you know, he does the famous tuck. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever done, hands up, he's done that. Of course, yeah. everybody's done <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he looks great. I think he looks great uh, when he does that. But that, that song, Goodbye Horses, I'm crying yeah. over you. Love it. And I've been singing it since. And, uh, yeah, all week. Um, did you notice um, James the Cat from Alien? Was in the film as well. Jones the cat. Yeah, it was watching um, when she got in the van. Oh, you, okay. Uh, it's just a ginger cat, though, isn't it? No, because Alien no, yeah. was made when. It's a well, seventy. <laughs> it's a very old cat. <laughs> just saying. Yeah, it probably isn't the same actor. <laughs> um, oh, the, on on music though, there's also it's a really nice use of no music. So when she when um, Hannibal's been transferred to the courthouse. And she comes in and Dr. Chilton has effectively hijacked the investigation and the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and she comes in, she's going to go, I'm so fired, your, your um, anagrams are showing. Yeah. Really desperate. There's no music. There's just this howling wind outside. But it's not howling because they're in the middle of this building. So it's just like this constant... Is, that's it. <laughs> just in the background. Shut the window, do uh, yeah, Just probably. enough so that... You sit there kind of going, is is that my house or is that on here? But it's just, there's no destruction. It's just Clarice. Brilliant. And I think all the performers, like Dr. Chilton, are brilliant He's performers. Creepy it's brilliant. Brilliant. so annoying. Brilliant, brilliant. And so brilliant. full of himself. And you're that, so pleased at the end. Yeah, that's okay, because okay, Hannibal's having dinner yeah. with an old friend. And having an old friend. For dinner, dinner that's it. <laughs> but when you first meet him, and he's there going, and he's just trying to hit on Clarice, yeah. saying, "Are you staying overnight? Because this can be Baltimore can be a fun town with the right guy." And he's got this horrible, cheesy, denture smile yeah. about him. He's awful. Yeah, wow. but brilliantly played by uh, Anthony Heald. Anthony Heald. Well done, Anthony. And okay. your chin. And I love the scale of the film as well. So um, it covers loads of different states. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're in despair at some point, terror. You're but laughing. Just put the fucking lotion in the basket. Put the lotion on the skin. Yeah. Yeah. Put the fucking lotion on the skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, his performance is amazing. He's so he's good. good. I haven't seen it. Well, whatever. Any bad performances? He's, he's brilliant. Um, no. I think because most of the performances are so brilliant, Scott Glenn is a bit ordinary. 
Exactly, FBI. Yeah. Jack Crawford, yeah. Yes. The Crow guy. Maybe, no, maybe, Crow guy's great. But yeah. maybe he's... Maybe he's just being yeah. the kind of person yeah. who would head up behavioural science at the FBI. There you go. Oh, he's for me, he's the the most ordinary of them all. But I'm not saying he's bad. It's because he just does ordinary stuff. He just does ordinary stuff. He's he's a suit. With his buzzard face. He's a lot. He's <laughs> got a lot line uh, more wrinkles now, hasn't he? Have you seen a recent picture of him? He looked like a scrotum. You could put beer mats all over his face. Crikey! <laughs> does it stand up to that? Yeah. Hell yes. 100%. Surprisingly so. I never realised. How much it doesn't even look like today. his age, does it? it no, really, it's brilliant. <clears throat> so, I'm uh, sure you've all seen it out there, but it's yeah, it was definitely worth a. Any memorable lines? Obviously, I is liver with some rubber beans on a nice Chianti. I kind of like the bit where Starling turns up, and that girl's been down there what week, two weeks. Yeah. She's desperate to get out, it's and then says, <laughs> "Don't leave me here, you fucking bitch." Yeah, it was the kind of thing that made me laugh. Oh, loads of stuff. Right, so I just want to talk a little bit about the sequels, prequels, all that kind of stuff. Right. So, um, I think the next one to call... We're not going to talk about Manhunter because it's different. That's brilliant. Go and watch it. Right. So, Hannibal came out next, I think. And is that the one with Andy Garcia? Uh, no. This is Which a, is the one where he eats the brain. Yes, it is. That's Andy Garcia. Yeah. Is that Andy Garcia? I thought that was like Ray Liotta. It is Ray Liotta. It's one of the two. So where's Andy it? Garcia. <laughs> You're right, Hannibal, it is really awesome. It Hannibal's is. quite fun, actually. It's, it's worth a watch. Well, what I, I did like, like I didn't like the fact that, um, obviously, Jodie Foster didn't come back to reprise that the role. definitely is a shame. But it's a different quality of film. It's not as good. It's a bit ploppy. Also, so it's a good idea that she didn't do that. Also, I didn't like what happened. This happens all the time in sequels. To Jodie Foster, uh, to Clarice Starling's character. Mm. So that she wasn't doing brilliantly at the FBI and... You know, she ends up... Yeah, you know, they let her down, that character. Yeah. It gets so let down. Let's yeah. just keep it where it is. Yeah. I like, I like seeing Hannibal with Florence. I think that was brilliant. I loved seeing it. Yeah, that. that's not... It's not based on a Thomas Harris book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The second one. And uh, then you've got... Red, Red Dragon. Dragon. So Red Dragon was the first one. Red Dragon was the sequel. The Which is Hannibal. <laughs> no, no. No, Red Dragon is Red Dragon. Uh, no, sorry, not Hannibal. Manhunter. Man Manhunter Man is basically Red Dragon. So do not watch Red Dragon whatsoever. Well, Anybody out there... You can easily watch both. I've watched That's both. That's very fine. Don't watch Red Dragon. You can watch shame. both. Oh, well, you can watch both. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, it's nice to see Hannibal... Back to Hannibal again. Nice to see him in Florence and Gary Oldman's great. That's good fun, that character. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I really want to recommend as well um, the TV series. Have you watched Hannibal? That's M M Mads Mikkelsen. Mm. Yes. Mm. I've only so, seen a couple of them. I love it. I think it's uh, brilliant. I think, uh, I think it aired on the pretentious, but then I suppose with this kind of material, you can quite easily do that. What I did find interesting about it, though, is the getting into the mind of Hannibal and, you know, he eats people. He's a cannibal. So on face value, you think, oh, that's disgusting. But wait a minute. He is profoundly clever. The amount of attention and detail, the way he nurtures the meat, the way he will grow the meat. Well, apparently know, people fermenting. were cooking these things he was cooking, obviously not with human yeah. bits. But, um, yeah. It's wonderful. The TV series really goes into that cuisine and the attention and the science that he puts into that cuisine and the, and the real artistry of it. Um, and they makes use, it quite appealing. And they, <laughs> use, they, they use, obviously, loads of stuff from the books and develop lots of things. Yeah. Um, but they couldn't get the rights to Silence of the Lambs. Right. So um, they were wrangling with that and then the series got cancelled, um, unfortunately. And I think they were just about to introduce Clarice Star Starling, which would have been good. Oh, right, OK. Uh, Max Mickelson does a great job. Uh, yeah, he? he's very, well, just when you think nobody could have a... I don't think he tops the performance, but certainly gives another performance. Yeah, yeah I think he's great. All right, well, I think yeah. we can score it. OK. I think it's going to be quite meaty. All right, so... Performances, Wyndham. Nine. Nine. Ten. Wow. Effects, eight. Seven. Eight. Plot. Nine. 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 Rewatch factor. Seven. I, I want to give it an eight. Eight. Direction. Nine. Eight. Eight. Cinematography. Eight. Seven. Nine. Sound and music. Seven. Eight. Seven. Originality. Nine. Nine. Oh, I'm going to go seven. Enjoyability. Nine. Eight. Eight. Nine. And life-changing past or present. 
Six for me. Gets a five for me. A three from me. <laughs> okay, so let's add up those all important scores. Incidental music. 18. Oh, don't give me more stuff to do. <laughs> Okay, I get 84. I've given it 78. 65. Right, so that gives it a moving light, lighthouse rating of... 75.6. 75.6, which puts it... Fourth place, just below The Exorcist. And above the dark crystal. Thankfully. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Thankfully, this holy water knocking out gone. Crash from the top ten, which I'm pleased about. I. Pressing film. Crash is a good it's film. Crashed out of the top ten. Aren't yes, we? crashed. Okay, so that's it. I suppose what we've got to do next is decide what we're doing for next time. Really? Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. Laurie, yeah, you've been packing our heads <laughs> for three weeks. Have you Look, got? Have you got, have you got our WhatsApp group messages with them? Because mine got deleted because I wiped my phone. Have you got the WhatsApp group messages? Could you yes. just look through them? Um, I think it'd be worth reading out a couple from Laurie uh, because Laurie, you, you've been obsessed with this Halloween episode. Absolutely. Yeah, you chose nineteen ninety one. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. L- listen. We horror. Do you, remember, do you know the rules of the bag of balls? I do know what, the rules of the bag of balls. What are the rules? The basic what rule the is we will never edit, we will never lie to you. What have you tried to do? Here's, twice here's, this month? Here's, here's a direct quote. Uh, if we all get to see it fairly soon and then somehow manage to pluck a relevant ball. <laughs> Somehow no, no. managed to pluck a relevant ball. Basically, right, to all you listeners out there, I'm desperate for my Halloween special. Turns out it's Halloween. So I really wanted to cover a particular film for this Halloween. Which was? It's Halloween 3. Right. Season of the Witch. Which we weren't going to do, but because you both really fucked up. By choosing <laughs> the goblins. You don't call Yeah. You we, lucky listeners get to hear us talk about a brilliant film. Okay. Um, and we were going to, I was going to play um, your, we were going to do it. Me and Wyndham kind of talked about it and decided we were going to do it anyway. We, okay. One of us was going to propose it as in the beam and one of us was going to propose it as on the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, you dirty but, guys. But you were getting so desperate about it. Um, we decided to just tell you at the end. Oh, thank you. Yeah, because you started sending WhatsApp messages saying, I've got this idea that this is how we could get it in there. And then <laughs> we didn't reply and you go, all right, it's probably, probably a bad idea. <laughs> so uh, there you go. So Halloween 3. So let's have a clip. Facts about the film. It was released in 1982, um, uh, um, directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, written by Tommy Lee Wallace. Who also did um, It, the TV uh, version, and uh, oh, what else did he do? Oh, something of merit. I can't remember. Great. And it made four and a half million in the United States. And it's got Tom Atkins as Dr. Daniel Chalice. Dan O'Herley, um, I think I said that very long, wrong, as Connell Cochran, mm. um, Stacey Nelkin as Ellie Gim- Gimbridge? Grimbridge, 
I said a name for you. Right, so Laurie, go on then, give us a synopsis. Yeah, okay, well, ah, uh, just quickly actually, back to the director. Oh, you can't even do this right! <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> he <laughs> needs us, man! <laughs> He was good friends with Carpenter, and he edited This is not a Halloween. Topic. This is not. That's talking about how the film is made. <laughs> right. So we're leading up to Halloween. We're a good. I think we're, we start off eight days away from Halloween. There's an advert, which is promoting the silver shamrock masks, Halloween masks, um, and it opens up some guy that's got one of these masks in his hand. And You're telling the whole something. story. You're telling the whole story. That's just the opening shot of the, the film. The Silver Shamrock Company. There's something strange going on with something these masks. Something strange is going uh, on. People are getting killed, and a doctor is pulled in uh, to the investigation. Trying to, to figure out what happening. the hell is going on. Yeah. And shit goes on. Right. Yeah? Thank you. He also directed uh, Fright Night 2. I'll shut up about the director now. <laughs> right, so, um, Halloween 3. It's nothing like any of the other Halloween films. Could someone enlighten us to this? Right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'll give it a go. So, we had Halloween. Uh, Michael Myers. Myers, who's basically like a mask-wearing, Jim Kirk mask-wearing, lumbering, supernatural, super... Before Powerful. Friday the 13th, actually, so we, you know, we haven't seen any of these stalking serial killer things before yeah. in movies. Yeah, and it's a really good film yeah. and a great soundtrack. soundtrack. So that's Halloween. Obviously very popular, so they kind of quickly Jim made... Jim Carpenter, yeah? Yeah. Who wrote the music? And John, John Carpenter. Sorry, John Carpenter. Right. So his idea was every, Hall- every film was going to be a Halloween-themed film, but completely different, like an anthology series of films. But I think the first film was so popular, they, they, they kind of had, had to, to Halloween make a film. But John Carpenter says it's basically an abomination, and he's very pleased that at the end they blow the shit up out of him. He was kind of, I think, hoping that was kind of the last we see of that character. Um, and back to kind of like the original idea that every... Halloween film will just be based about that night, a story, individual, yeah. different stories about it. So this is what Halloween 3 was all about. But uh, all the fans of the Halloween franchise went to the cinema, saw this, they're like, what? So massive criticism. No one lo- liked it. They all hated it, whatever. But um, they were completely wrong. What do you think? Was there, did you like this film? No, it's rubbish. Ha! <clears throat> wow! <laughs> How come? I, I just think... Um, I, I like the premise and I, I, in how, how it fits in with um, Carpenter's vision of, you know, a self-contained Halloween story. Yeah. My first issue. Yes. Halloween 3, mm. Season of the Witch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Ed. Ex- explain that. Where's the witch? Where's the witch? Right. Okay. It's, Mind it's, you, they had that problem with the Blair Witch. Never saw that either. Okay, but we're, we're talking, talking about this. No, kind of, I'm just saying, maybe, maybe there's a theme with witches. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, it's an ancient so uh, I've, I've festival of no, Samhain. I've been led down... Tenuously linked to Stonehenge, paganism... I've been led down an alleyway in the You have. Because there's no witches. There's no... There's, there's witch Secondly, yeah. it's a robot movie to begin with. <laughs> it's a whole lot of movies. It's... it's it's like the set for wives. Android, it's like set for wives. Yes, yeah. Um, I didn't really dig um, Tom Atkins. Hold on, are you, are you in the 70s? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm kind of trying to, you know, <laughs> empathise with Right, it. let's I talk just... about... Okay, so let's talk about Tom Atkins a little bit. He's like a poor man's Burt Reynolds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> he's yeah, chubby, yes. he's got a tash, he's it's, got a pop it's face. It's almost like this film should have been made in the early 70s. His legs are made in the 80s. Long. Completely agree. His he's sexist, pro- he's misogynist, he's, yeah. you know... He, no, he's a womaniser, he's not sexist. Do you not he's think just a bit there's of a like an inherent sexism in womanizers? Well, yeah, maybe, but I think the pat on the bum of the nurse's bum is... <laughs> It's fine, it's she returns the pat. It's endearing, isn't it? It's not <laughs> always got time for I love... I love him being in there. There's a lot. He's of... acting his socks off in this film. Yeah. Oh my god, in a good way. I thought you said he's acting sucked off in this film. The oh, bit really. where he, uh, where he's witnessing the, that horrible sort of demon, uh, test demonstration thing of the family, yeah. the Selma's yeah. family, and he puts his hands up next to his face. <laughs> oh, I can't. I love it. See, now this film, you know where people like love things that are crap? And yeah. Oh man, I love it because it's all crap and kind of cool. There is an element of my love about this on this film, but this film is not crap by 
any stretch of the imagination. There is so much stuff in this film. So, like you say, at the beginning, uh, you've kind of got these, you know, the, the robot film, where you're saying yeah. the robot bit. So these kind of agents have got, like, black leather-gloved wearing, very still, very correct, very strong, silent, you know, whatever the hell they are. Yeah. So you think, okay, what, what, what's happening here? But then as it unfolds, you find out you're kind of like, they're, they're robots. And then, but then it goes into uh, this whole conspiracy thing where he's like, he's trying to figure out, okay, what does that mask mean? Who is Silver Shamrock? He goes to the town and then the town's got this, you know, CC camera. Yeah, well, that's everywhere. what made me think of for Wise. It was very... Definitely. Much. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're all kind of like these robotic things and they're keeping a secret. I mean, uh, I think that whole robot thing, it's a bit of a... Um, blind alley. No, it's Dead not. End. It's, well, it's, it's all part of it because the uh, Kragan, what's his name? Corrigan. Yeah. The maker. So their family Cochran. are like Mich Cochrane. That's it. They're like machine makers. So when he goes to like the actual oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the the place, the factory, you see all these different machines and all that stuff. So that's obviously evolved and evolved and evolved for them to get to a state of actually being able to build these kind of humanoids. And they do kind of refer to that. There's a drunk character who said, would he give me a job when he came in and took yeah. over? Yeah. No, because he's replaced all the workers with his own yeah. mechanical toys. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got that sci-fi element. You've got the horror element. Let's you've got talk the gore about element. the horror and the gore. Yeah. Because it is quite a nasty film. In, oh in my God, ways. this film is nasty. I, the, bit, the first bit where the kid, um, I think the mask malfunctions. Um, and the kid dies, is it in the motel? It's not a kid, it's, it's a, a woman. woman. It's a woman. Yeah, yeah. She's come to visit because I think there's been some... Mix up with her order. With her orders, because yeah, she's... That's it, yeah, sorry, mask. I was only watching that at the colour of my eyes. Um, one of the badges has fallen off her mask and she decides to get all cosy in bed. Yes. And she's reading a book. Um, oh, I remember matter. taking a note of the author and I googled it, but he, he talks, that author wrote a lot about ancient power. Right. And stuff like that, so that's nice. It anyway. would have been if you don't remember the name of the author. Oh, Carlos Casmozo. Don't make it up. Yeah, I'm not. Um, anyway, so yeah, she starts messing around with the, the badge and she sees that there's a microchip in it and then there's this beautiful blue light that zaps her right in the mouth um, and then it cuts away. I think you see, I think they're having some nookie in the next room yeah. or whatever. What is that noise? Don't worry about it. Back to the boobs. <laughs> and then you cut back to her and then it's just awesome. It's, 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 na it's nasty. And it's like when the kid dies, it's nasty. When the, which, the kid, which kid dying moment. Buddy. Yeah. Oh my Annoying God. Kid. Right, so I've seen a lot of horror the films. The demonstration yeah. for. Oh, yes. For, for, for yeah, 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 yeah. Daniel for Chalice. I've yeah. seen a lot of horror films, right? Um, and I've seen, you know, obviously images and, you know, things that are supposed to terrify and move and this, that, and the other. Th that scene, uh, uh, probably particularly is now because I'm a father of two and all that, but that family, that salesman's family, you know, they're a bit grotesque, you know, they're a bit. I like the Roald Dahl characters. Yeah, yeah, they are. But, you know, they're just trying. You know, they're trying to get on. They're living the they're American trying... dream, aren't they? Yeah. Well, they're just trying. Yeah. Working they're hard, trying. being yeah. successful. There is hope for us, I think the mum says. And the kid's a bit of a brat, but, you know, that's what kids are. He's a are. little bit like um, Augustus Gloop. Yes, yes. They're not really not, that Not in the fun, but you know what I mean? There's, there's the two, the parents who are overindulgent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, can do whatever it's a bit likes. spoiled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I recognise that. As a parent, I'm, you know, I'm a bit like that. I'm a bit grotesque. My kids You're are quite strict as well. I'm not strict. I'm anyway, cold and emotionless. That scene <laughs> is, is horrific. It affects me. It really, really deeply yeah. affects me. It's awful. Same and then you've got that bleh, 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 bleh on it, and it's... The, amazing, it's amazing. Compared to the other Halloween films, every other Halloween film is paled in comparison to this film. This film well, is that's well, I think number one, the first one was very good. It's, 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 it's really interesting because we obviously bring different things yeah. to our watching experience. The fact that you're a father and I'm not. Oh, no, 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 I'm, no. I'm just... I'm, 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 you are. That is you true. Are. That is yeah, both that, of them. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that scene has kind of extra... It's always... I've got it's a lot of doesn't didn't affect me at all. The, the thing that stand, stand it, stood out in that scene mm. was how much of a coward the male, the, the grown-up men in this film are. So when um, when that kid is his mask is going off and he's kind of beginning to decay and doing all that kind of stuff, mm. what would as a father what would you do? You'd rush across. You'd try and take the mask off. You'd try and help your kid. He kind of backs behind his wife and kind mm. of pushes her forward. Yeah, and when. 
Um, Ellie Grimbridge, who is the daughter of the guy we see at the beginning yeah. who dies, who's being chased by these guys. Mm -hmm. um, she's trying to investigate her father's murder because, as we discussed the other week, in diagnosis murder, doctors are the best people to do police <laughs> investigations with. She goes with Daniel Chalice, um, and she sees the station wagon of her dad parked in a garage, and she goes, wait a minute, that's my dad's car. So he, she goes over there. Chalice just stands there going, uh, 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 backing away. Absolute bunch of cowards. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a bit of a dick, really, as well, because he's at the end, of... which is, I think he's got a very good ending, you it's know, trying ending. to turn off the, uh, the TV commercial. Yeah. And he's just there watching the kids watching <laughs> the TV. <laughs> yeah. so take your mask off, yeah. you know. <laughs> Yeah, you, you yeah. probably should have said that. But it's and like, but, why, God, why? Yeah. <laughs> if only you say, there was something I could do! <laughs> I think, right, going back to the beginning again, I love that setup of it being in the hospital. So the guy that's running away, he's gone nuts, and because he's gone so nuts and panic ridden, whatever, he's taken to hospital. So that brings us into that environment. And I think it's probably one of the first times we've seen this, so this has been parodied a lot. So you go, uh, I think Planet Terror, you get that sort of hospital parody, Josh Brolin plays the Doctor. Yeah. Very similar sort of appearance, actually, to, to the guy in this. Um, the Void, which came out a few years ago, again, I think they set that in a hospital, but massively, Dark Place, Darth Marenghi's Dark Place. Yeah. This, that is, this film, is that's what they're spoofing. So just 100%. hold on, well, let's talk about a little bit about the other effects, because... I mean, I mean the computer for a start. We're talking about 1983, yeah. yeah. And the computer was looked like it was from the early 70s. Yeah. The computer's brilliant. It's flawless. <laughs> it's absolutely flawless. <laughs> and and there was a shot of the factory exploding at the end, which looked awful. Yeah. Just and the, really the, cheap. You're it's, worrying about stuff that and there was, really doesn't need to be worried. There was a really lovely bit when um, Chalice and uh, Ellie Grimbridge mm -hmm. are they bro he's broken out of his little kind of cell. He's gone off and found her. He's rescued her. Yeah. Okay, we have to do something. What do we do? I don't know. I'm going to creep along behind this rack of, of fucking masks <laughs> yeah. in front of everybody where nothing else is moving. <laughs> yeah. They'll never see me. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, I, I liked the little touch. Was it in the bar? I think it was in the bar. When um, the, the advert for Deep Halloween Deep came Deep. on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's very meta, kind of in a way. I think, yeah. that, I think that's what they call it. But yeah, you see it in the bar, but then you also see it right near the end where Cochrane has, has strapped him up to the chair, puts a mask on him, so we're basically now leading up to the big reveal. Yeah. Um, uh, and then at nine o'clock, they're going to show the advert, Watch the Magic Pumpkin. Yeah, and, and then that's going to be a giveaway. Or, yeah, the giveaway, that's it, the big giveaway. And that's when all the masks will basically zap all the kids in the back of the head and render their we heads. We know, we've seen the film. Wasps, we've all beetles. watched it. We've but that moment when he straps him into the chair and pops the mask on, he turns the TV on, obviously, because yeah. he needs to watch the, the video to, for it to kick off, and it's, it's Halloween, and the music's right there, ding, 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 and it's like, oh, this yeah. is, it's brilliant. Oh, I won't go that far. Does it, stand oh. up, does it stand up today? 100%. I think it does. As a, as a horror film. I, yeah. I mean, not for all the shit bits, but I can quite enjoy it. <laughs> There's no rhythm. shit bits. <laughs> it's crazy. It's a crazy film. It starts out with these robots and goes into conspiracy. Well, and it's it's back to the then, then so, you get like freaking stone freaking henge. Yeah. What how the did hell? You get that. So that, ah, you wouldn't believe how hard it is. To get that. <laughs> exactly. You're absolutely right, my friend. I would not believe that. Yeah. It's uh, any memorable lines. I've got one. Uh, where do you want to sleep? That's a dumb question. Oh. Yeah, that I've written down that exact one. That is beautiful, beautiful Brilliant. writing. There's some random writing where she, it, there was a lot of um, uh, kind of truncated exposition. Yes. Where she's there in the car going out there and she's going, what I want to know is, why did they build this factory in the middle of nowhere? Mm. And it's just like, uh, it's un, it just felt unnecessary. Yeah. It was just that kind of... Signposting the fact that something yeah. weird's going on. Were you on. bored watching it with? A little bit. Oh, oh my yeah. fucking god! And I was annoyed by it as well. The bits when at the end, uh, when he's he's escaped the town. Yeah. With her. Uh huh. And then he crashes the car because it turns out she's been she's a robot. Yeah. Into a robot. Yeah. And it's just like okay, I get the fact that horror films, or the jump factor in films, is you propose something, you make somebody jump. 
the hero overcomes it, but he doesn't really, and it comes back. And then it comes back again. Yeah. And then it comes back again. It's like, oh, <laughs> but they're beautiful moments you need to celebrate. Like the bit where he gets out, he's, he's strapped to the chair, but he manages to get his mask off and then he flicks it onto the camera. <laughs> Perfectly. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. That's fucking awesome. The soundtrack, really moog heavy, synth heavy. Uh, John Carpenter did the soundtrack. Um, it's a brilliant soundtrack. The, the countdown sequence. No, it's not. It I don't think it's a brilliant soundtrack. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. No, it's not. I you're agree wrong. With you, James. And then we get under. Uh, that and means even the, we're right. Yeah. Even the Silver Shamrock uh, tune is right. a work of genius. Now, if that, if the intention of that is to be really bloody annoying, well, yeah, it does. Spot on. Yeah, it annoys the character all the way through. It's yeah. just. It really <sighs> Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's no, 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 no. And then. Uh, I just love the bit where we're leading up to the advert, it's just about to be broadcast, and it shows you all the different towns in America, all the kids walking around. I thought they had Haddonfield in the original, and I was really looking forward to watching it. See, they should have put Haddonfield, which is where the Halloween would set. They should have put Haddonfield, yeah. you're absolutely right. But that's just wonderful, just seeing all those kids walking around. Real sense of scale, just like Sounds Real sense of scale. All over the country. The reason why I've picked this is because it's Halloween, I think it's a you great film to it. watch you pick it. at Halloween. <laughs> Um, and there's just so much in it. I think it's an absolutely brilliant film. Right, okay. It does have oh. the old man from Robocop in it. Yep, there's the old man. Yeah, he played Dan O'Hurley. He's, he's, he's good. He's yeah, good. He's, great. he's good. Right, all right, let's Facey score. Facey pulls when the demonstration's going on. Let's the score it. Family's being killed. Mm. All right, performances. Five. 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 Uh, six. Effects. Seven. Eight. Four. Oh. Plot, six. Six. Uh, it's nuts. Eight. I, d I didn't dislike the plot. I thought it was a nice the Festival of Samhain. <laughs> Last time was 3,000 years when the hills won red with blood. Very good. Rewatch factor, seven. Two. Nine. Direction, four. Four. Uh, seven. Cinematography, four. Four. Five. Sounds and music. Two. Ooh, nine. Three. Uh, originality, six. Six. Nine. Enjoyability, seven. Four. Nine. And life changing pastel, present, five. Zero. <laughs> nine. So this would be one that I'd be laying in bed late at night when I first would have seen it on my black and white TV. We've done that bit. And it... <laughs> right, let's add up the scores. <laughs> Okay. I have 37. I have 54. Uh, bear with me. Mm. 3 off of 30 is 27, so that would be 79. Why? Oh. So, what does that give us, Wyndham? Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> 37 plus 50, 54? No, 54. Plus 79. 37 plus 79 plus 54. 56.6. What? Fine. I don't think that's going to trouble the leaderboard. No, that's fine. I don't need it necessarily in the leaderboard, but it's just... Okay, well, it, puts it, it puts it just under Cujo, but above <coughs> Scanners, which I think is perfectly placed. Really. Yeah, it sounds yeah, fair. That's all right. Yeah. Great. All right then, so um, we've got to choose for next. Who's choosing this time? I believe we figured out it was... I think it's me. Yeah. Okay. It's you. It is you. Right. Come on. Come on, Japanese random. Something. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> we've had quite a few... Have we had a lot of years recently, or am I just imagining that? Yeah, you're just imagining things. However, I do feel... Oh, nice ball play. <laughs> <laughs> With you just couldn't wait, could you? Uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll go and reach. <laughs> sorry. Come in. Nestle. Nestle. Look at me. Okay, I have a ball. Yeah. What's that? It is number 61. Number 61. 61. Which <laughs> is... Universal horror. What the hell is that, James? So, 
films from Universal which have a horror element. So obviously you've got all the um, black and white movies of the 30s and 40s to choose right. from. Okay. Um, but there may be some later horror motion pictures by Universal. This is Universal Studios. Yes. Okay. Anything within their catalogue. Yes. This will require Google. Would uh, or another search engine. Anybody like to Google? Oh, use my own. I can look over your shoulder. Right, so we'll get back to you in the miracle of magic in a second. And now a message from our sponsors. Yeah. It might be unpopular to say it out loud, but we all know kids are a constant drain on every element of your lives. Whether it's cold and they claim they need clothes, or the ground's hard and they want shoes, or they need unconditional love so as to grow up well balanced and able to contribute to modern society, there's not a moment of a day that you're not worried sick about something horrible happening to them, whether deserved or not. Not only that, but they also require regular feeding. It's not like you don't have enough on your plate, you've now got to worry about what to put on theirs too. <sighs> well, fear not. Help is at hand. Simply call out, Help me, Cheddar Goblin! And watch amazed as a dirty-looking green goblin spews litres and litres of partially goblin-digested macaroni and cheese all over your darling future caregivers. That's right, with a simple call of, Help me, Cheddar Goblin! You can summon a mythical creature that should definitely be on a register somewhere to provide all the nutrition your growing future disappointments need. After all, nothing is as nutritious as beige. Cheddar Goblin. The food that doesn't need to contain any green because he is green. This advert has been brought to you by the mind of Panos Cosmatis and Mandy in conjunction with the Mythical Creature Cheese Board working tirelessly to bring you partially digested cheese products. <laughs> <laughs> right, men or choices? Yeah. Okay, Laurie, you can go first. Okay, my first one is a surprisingly great film. When I saw it, amazing soundtrack. It's really, really good. The Incredible Shrinking Man. Is that a horror film? Oh, there is for him from his perspective when that spider you don't turns really care up. About these kind of when that spider turns food. up, he's horrified. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm going to go for a kind of obvious one. Um, Psycho. Yeah. Good call. Big film. Okay. Uh, my second one is 1982. John Carpenter's The Thing. Is that Universal? Yeah, it is. Well, as it's universal horror, I do think that we should have something from the heyday of the monster movies from Universal. Cause they, um, like The Incredible Shrinking Mat? No, because it's not a horror film. Uh, <laughs> so, it's a really good I'm film, torn between Bride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein, and The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Mm. Um, They're all alright. I think because how important it was, I'm going to choose Frankenstein. Mmm. So, Wyndham. <clears throat> we can just make sure we can watch all of these this time, yeah? Yeah. Great. Okay, okay. these are in English, right? <laughs> as far as we can tell, okay. I think that's what Universal tends to do. Okay. So, Universal Horror. That's the key. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No. I just think that's the key. Uh, to remember that the, it's Do a not horror. just discount Sorry. the don't, incredible shrink. Don't influence Wyndham. Okay, so there's a little bit of redemption on my part coming because of the hit off <laughs> from the last one. And I'm going to go for one from each of you. Oh. Oh. Spread the love. <laughs> but I'm going to go m the more recent Psycho and The Thing. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. The new. Brilliant. Well, two amazing films there. Yeah, yeah. Undeniable. Brilliant. All right, so um, I think we talked long enough. So Definitely. Um, we'll see you all next time. See you later, all. Good job. Enjoy Happy Halloween. Halloween. <laughs>